Hey, welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with. It's the interview series presented by WFPK and WFPK.org, Consequence and the Consequence Podcast Network. Thanks as always for making your way here, checking out the series. You know what to do, like what you see, what you hear, hit that subscribe button. I, uh, I put out three new interviews every single week, so it's a great way to keep up with your favorite artists. And I am so excited and honored Stephen Van Zandt, a.k.a. Little Stephen, is here. Hello, sir. Hello, Kyle. It is a, How uh, are you? I'm great, man. It's a it's a pleasure to have you on here, and and we're talking about a few things. I know we're gonna uh, I'm gonna ask about the tour with the the E Street and all how that's going, but uh, but we got it's sort of been a big anniversary for the Underground Garage 20 21 years right around there since you launched this. Congratulations! Yeah, I, I, I thank you. I, I know I should be keeping track uh, of these things, but uh, I have no sense of time whatsoever. Uh, it's one of my you know eccentric many eccentricities uh um but yeah thank you I, yeah we kind of became a somehow we, we we stumbled our way into becoming an institution now, i don't know how that happened um nobody wanted to show at first <laughs> and here we are 20 whatever 20 21 years later and um that's nice it's nice because uh a lot of people depend on us at this point you know yeah we we've uh we in addition to of course playing all the classic stuff um that nobody plays anymore um we also have introduced over a thousand new bands you know so that's nice uh so yeah 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 i, I know uh, light I and found, sweet if you can do it yeah, yeah i found plenty of those bands actually from listening to like it, it is people do depend on it and, and people God, people hoard the shows as their own you know like i remember even hearing an interview i was i was thinking right before we did this with uh with eddie vetter uh pearl jam and he brought out a big binder that he collects your show you know like even that, like, <laughs> yeah. you, like, like do you hear from those fans like that that <laughs> like like listen to that degree yeah yeah we, we used to we used to uh uh, uh ship it you know on on uh on uh, cd yeah and uh <laughs> and yeah so so a lot of, a lot of a lot of people uh, collected them uh and uh yeah he 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 was a he was an early early listener which was great you know he's such a he's a good friend yeah nice champion to have right there well let, yeah. let's just back up a little bit you know for the for the 20 years i mean what was your vision when you launched this and and because it seems like it's been pretty consistent you know to as you said to to dig into the history of rock and roll and to show off the new bands it, you know what you had in mind is that still how it plays today yeah um i had a you know it's funny because you know watch out what you wish for right you know you, you're staring there at, at a blank page and, and um it just so happened I knew the guy who had taken over Sirius Satellite uh, uh, programming, and um, and he says, "Well, you know, what should we do with this?" You know, and I said, "Well, I just happen to have two two new formats that I I don't know what to do with." You know, so it's like perfect timing. But you know, it's it, it's interesting when you have a uh, the opportunity to do anything you want. You know, anything, no rules whatsoever. You know um it it really uh it really makes you think <laughs> for a minute um and it took it took a little while to, to find my you know radio voice and all that you know the, the, you know what exactly the show should be but we pretty much hit the ground running it didn't it didn't change a whole lot um the original idea was um to make the, the british invasion the center of the universe and uh, play everything that influenced the British invasion and everything the British invasion has influenced, pretty much. Um, and that really hasn't changed. Um, you know, uh, I handpicked every song. I don't know what, I'm, I don't know how many songs we have now. It must be six or 6,000 or so. Um, and um, so the sensibility that connected them really was just my own completely subjective, uh, you know, opinion to be honest um but it was fun to connect the dots uh play play the original version you know of, of a song that's covered by the british invasion you know uh, and then we started well much later i don't know about 10 years in we started it's, it's, we finally um it, it, you know made that an official thing with the with the daily double double play um what do we call it <laughs> the double play uh um the daily double you know you know where, where we'll play the original version with the cover version together you know but but for years we just played them both you know as as regular programming um 
So, but, and, and cover, and we cover, you know, we really cover the waterfront. I mean, we go back pretty much to 51, 1951. So it's now it's 70 years, mm -hmm. you know, 70 years of, of rock and, and its influences. So we'll, you know, we're the only place playing the original, you know, the blues stuff, you know, the Howlin' Wolf and Muddy Waters, you know, where it came from and the pioneers like Little Richard and Bo Diddley and, you know, Chuck Berry. And, and then right, right up to, you know, every, every, and every subgenre related to what became the British invasion, which includes girl, the girl group thing, you know, the Beatles especially picked up on the girl group thing, you know, with, you know, the Shirelles and, and, you know, all that, uh, you know, chiffons and Shangri-Las and, uh, and the surf, the surf genre also, um, you know, um, influencing the Beach Boys and, um, and doo-wop, you know, influencing the Four Seasons. Um, you know, we, we only, we, we're probably the only place still playing doo-wop, which was really um, in the entirety of rock and roll when rock and roll started. Uh, it was nothing but doo-wop, really, uh, you know, in the beginning. Uh, rockabilly hadn't even happened yet, <laughs> you know. Uh, so, you know, we played doo-wop, we played rockabilly, uh, you know, we... we um, uh, we added Slim Jim Phantom having his own uh, rockabilly show later on. Um, you know, we just try and cover all the subgenres that made the British invasion what it was, which was, uh, as far as I'm concerned, beginning of a, of a renaissance period of the 60s that uh, I think will never be equaled uh, and will be studied for hundreds of years to come. I sincerely believe that. And, and and believe that the history will someday be, be divided at pre sixties and post sixties, you know, because um, it was the birth of not not it was just not just an artistic renaissance, but and and that included movies and books and everything else, and you know painting, um, but also um, it was the birth of consciousness, mm -hmm. and, and 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 the birth of mass media, and, and and you know the birth of so many so many social movements, uh, so there was a lot going on in the sixties and. Um, so early on, I decided, you know, a lot of people feel like they missed the party, you know, and they kind of did. <laughs> um, so I'm going to make sure that, you know, um, you know, we, we're going to, you know, recapture as much as we can of that party. And um, not only celebrate the music, but also celebrate the culture. So we started having these little, um, you know, vignettes about um, just silly, cultural, fun things, you know. Let's talk about who invented the surfboard. Let's, you know, who invented the hot dog. You know, uh, who invented the drive-in theater. You know, let's celebrate Roger Corman. You know, let's celebrate. You know, uh, you know Jack Kerouac. You know, let's celebrate Lawrence Ferlinghetti. You know, you know, let's celebrate everything that's cool, basically. Uh, you know, because um, not very much is cool anymore. I'm sorry. You know, <laughs> and and and. Um, you know, so it became a, a thing of celebrating the 60s, you know, mostly because that's the special era, you know. And then um, picking the DJs that could uh, tell first person stories. You know, that that was, um, you know, I, something I really wanted to do. I wanted to have, you know, instead of a journalist or whatever, you know, talking about second person or third person or something they something they read about or something they heard about you know i want to try and find people who are actually there if i could you know so starting with andrew lou goldham who was just a phenomenal dj for us and uh, now now mark Lindsay, you know we just added recently it was just incredible uh you know and um and and you know and, and other other a lot of artists you know palmyra del rand who you know who was an, who was an artist herself um, of course, Michael Debar, uh, you know, um, so, you know, we, we, we wanted to um, uh, have as much of that as we could uh, in, involved, uh, you know, I mean, we, we inherited Rodney Bingenheimer, you know, who, who was in the center of so much. And, 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 and you know, I got to get him to tell, I got to tell, I, I got to get him to tell more stories because, I mean, this guy has more stories than, you know, anybody. And uh, he doesn't tell he doesn't tell enough stories. I, I gotta I gotta talk to him about that. Um, you know he's he's always finding new music still to this day. You know this guy like broke he broke you know Bowie you know behind you, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> uh, and, and and the entire glam thing and, and uh, you know he 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 was so so responsible for so much and 
And the, the minute they let him go in L.A., which they shamefully should never, you know, should never have done, um, you know, they kept moving his time slot later and later and later until he was on like three o'clock in the morning or something. And then they finally let him go. And I, you know, I just, I just call him the next day. I'm like, Ronnie, you, you, you're not going to be out of work for 24 hours. You know, uh, you come, come with us. You know. Um, so yeah, you know, so it was mostly bring personality back to radio okay you know i grew up with radio it was everything to me i mean we had we had a bunch of great tv shows on at the same time i must say you know we had like 10 rock and roll tv shows on can you imagine a world like that you know uh, but and that only lasted two or three years but um, but radio was always uh, really first you know and it, it introduced us to the music we loved and 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 and, the, and we you know we had a relationship with we had a relationship with with the radio station, and with and with the and with the DJs. I wanted to bring that back. You know, I mean, it's somewhere along the way they chased all the personality out of music radio and, and chased it into sports radio and, and talk radio. And guess what? The audience went with them. You know, that's that wasn't a coincidence. Hmm. That's what people want. The people want that relationship. You know, and it was just gone. It was gone from rock radio for I don't know what thirty years or something. You know. And so we brought that back and brought back, you know, IDs, you know, artists doing, you know, IDs again. And and we brought in movie clips, you know, we, we, we play movie clips in between the songs just to, again, reinforce the the 60s culture, mostly, although there are movie clips from every era. But, um, you know, just fun, man. Bring back some fun because life is just so fucking boring. <laughs> Jesus Christ, you know? When, when, when did it become so boring? Really, you know, it's terrible. And I, mean, I feel so bad for this generation and the last generation and the generation before that. I mean, this has gotten more and more boring, especially since the eighties, you know, but um, that was already, you know, not nearly as much fun as the, you know, we were having in the sixties and seventies. But um Anyway, so it's it's all it's all that you know. It's 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 the coolest music. It's the coolest cultural stuff, and just you know, fun, man, fun. Yeah. Well, I I will say the cultural impact that it has had, and it reminded me. I mean, the things you're saying. <clears throat> I mean, this is complete coincidence that we're here talking about this. Like my very first thing. I I am a I am a child of the '80s, so my very first uh, piece of music that I got was "Born in the USA" on cassette. But the next thing was all the Time Life cassettes that came out around that time, the little pink cassettes that they would sell on TV. That was all from the 60s. And that became, yeah. I became captivated. I mean, we were in a time in the 80s where, you know, the 50s became sort of what everybody was looking back. The 60s, the Wonder Years was a big show, you know, at that point. So, so you know, yeah. all of that became such an important time for me. So, you know, hearing when I finally did get turned on to the Underground Garage I mean, listening to it is like getting a PhD in rock and roll. If you listen long <laughs> enough, it really is. It's there, you know, it's and and mm. then when you look at the television shows of today, the music that, you know, ends up being the music that everybody's talking about, it ends up being the older music. It's not the newer songs that, you know, so it's not a question, by the way, it's just saying how much it is appreciated, you know, all the things that you were just talking about, what that actually does mean to us fans. Yeah, well, thank you. Yeah, I, I, you know, I'm, you know, I'm a fan first. I mean, and by the way, this is all about being selfish, not being philanthropic. You know, uh, not that we make any money from it, we we don't. <laughs> but but but, uh, you know, I, I want to turn the radio on and, and and you know have that experience that I grew up with. I mean, that that's what the bottom line is. You know, it was all about me. <laughs> you know, me being selfish and, and wanting to, you know, have some cool radio on again you know mm -hmm. um you know not, nothing wrong with with regular mainstream uh, rock radio i mean you know in, in its limited way you know i mean that that's the format that plays us right you know i mean there, you know nothing wrong with them and, and i'm on and those are the most of the stations i'm on as far as my uh my my, my regular terrestrial you know my show my weekly show which is still on um, I don't know how many, uh, 80, 80 affiliates or whatever it is. Yeah, we, we had it here at FPK in Louisville because we're AAA public radio. So, you know, it, it was. Uh, it well, was it, should be, it, should be, it should be on a station like that. Yeah, you yeah. Know, it was great uh, for us. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what happened there. We should get it back on. But, but um, um, 
anyway, th those you know those are the those are most of the stations that I'm that I'm actually on. Those you know those stations that wanted to be a little bit wider than the 300 records that they play, you know, or whatever it is, um, you know, you go from 300 to 6,000, you know, um, you know, so there's nothing wrong with that. It's, it's just, it's just, it's just a bit limited and you're not gonna, you're not gonna get uh, all the mixed genres. I mean, people said you, I couldn't do it. You can't mix the genres, you know, you just can't, you know, it's never gonna work, you know, you can't play Howlin' Wolf, into the Ramones, you know, <laughs> into, you know, into uh, the Ronettes, you know, into, uh, uh, you know, the, the Woggles or whatever the new band is, you know. Uh, and, and I was like, yeah, you really can. You know, you really can do that because uh, that's my taste and that's what I want to hear. That's and how people I really hear... listen to music. Yeah, yeah, and you know, and you want to have that diversity uh, because it's all cool stuff, you know. And I, you know, you can't play anything, but I, you know, if I like it, I think you know, there's going to be other people that like it. I mean, you have to have that kind of megalomaniacal ego <laughs> to to do this in the first place, you know. You have to say to yourself, you know, I am just the arbiter of, you know, cool, <laughs> and uh, you know, if I like it, you know, millions are going to like it. And that turned out to be pretty true, uh, actually. You know, luckily, uh, you know, it was just by luck. But, 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 you know, I'm a fan first. You know, I, I want it, what I, when I want to hear, I figure other people want to hear. And, um, you know, so that's 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 the basis of it. Well, let me now take us from you know the airwaves to the stage because I really want to uh, uh, quickly ask about the uh, the tour that you're on right now. Of course, E Street and Bruce back out, and you know, for the first time in a few years now, and. Um, and and I think you know I've, I've, it's so fun to watch how you interact with listeners and fans, Twitter, everything else, uh, because because you know <laughs> even though they're fans, you don't hold back on calling their bullshit sometimes. And and you know one of the things I think that come up is you guys are playing a tighter set list this time around. Mm. Uh, you had mentioned online because like you're telling a story more than maybe you ever have, and and I just kind of want to throw that out. What is the story and what was the decision behind kind of keeping it group like this? Yeah, I had to, I had to, you know, I had to let that guy have it the other day. I, you know, he's like, you know, geez, you started off playing 28 songs and now you're playing 26. You know, I want my money back. And, you know, you know, get the fuck out of here. Okay. You know, I, I'm like, you know, anybody measuring this show by the amount of songs or the amount of time you spend on stage ain't listening you're not paying attention okay you're some kind of accountant or something you know go fucking you know play with numbers somewhere else you know this ain't about numbers it's about an emotional experience mm -hmm. and this one happens to be uh, i think a special one and the audiences are reacting uh in a way i've never seen in america okay this is the strongest reaction we have ever received from audiences in America. That's and we, an incredible and we, statement. It is an incredible statement because we've had the best audiences in America always, always. They've always been, you know, go to any any show you want to go to. We've always had the best reaction from an audience. It's just we just have a wonderful relationship. And this time they've just gone to some other level. And I think part of it is the show. Um, it's a yes, it's different. It is different um but it's like more like a broadway show you know and more, more like a typical show of a rock band you know most rock bands don't change any songs mm -hmm. you know i know rock bands that have the set list laminated <laughs> 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 that's that's the truth okay um and you know um more like one of my disciples shows which is we you know I, I i always create a, a theme and a story and so every song has a purpose you know, so you don't just change songs. Uh, you know, I, I, you know, when I do my own shows, I don't change songs. I, I decide what the show is and pretty much and stick to it. And most people do. It's like a Broadway show. Why? Because you're telling a story, and every song has a purpose. And it's kind of, and of course, Bruce had the the, the terrific uh, Broadway show, uh, and um, and so you know, um, you know, that might be coincidental. Uh, you know, whatever. But but um. The last album we did, Letter to You, um, had a, a, the most um, coherent, uh, I think, theme of Bruce's 
career, really. Uh, I mean, I, I all my albums are thematic albums. You know, every single one of my albums, uh, I, I come up with the idea first and, and the theme first and what I want to say, and then I write the album. Uh, Bruce had never really worked that way until this one. Um, you know, he um, happened to have his one of his you know long long uh, long time friends uh, die, uh, and 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 he realized he was the last guy left from his original band, the Castiles. You know, when George uh, Thies died, and um, and that you know that, that makes you think, <laughs> you know, <laughs> suddenly, <laughs> um, wow, you know. And out of that grew uh, the wonderful album, which is um, extremely uh, high quality for for a guy, you know, doing it this long and and having no reason to continue being creative. Honestly, you know, I mean him and and you know Bruce and and, and Bob Dylan particularly, you know, these two guys just you know they don't know how to stop. Right. <laughs> you know, they they just don't know. How, you know, lucky us. They, they, you know what I mean? They, 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 they yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, the songs on Letter to You are incredible, and and they're, and they're going over incredible. You know, and in America, it's not, it, it's, it's, you know, it's not like it's not like everybody in America runs out and buys a new album. Okay, it's just one of those things. Takes a little bit more time in America, mm -hmm. um, so you can see, you know, on some of the faces, you know, the. the some some people recognize the new songs, uh, but most don't. And yet they're going over wonderfully. They're, they're really they're, they're going over like 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 people you know have been listening to these songs for for for, for decades. And um, and that's because of the quality of the songs. You know, they're just they're just immediately accessible, and they're just terrific. You know, um, so so the the album was mostly about you know mortality and uh um you know i don't want to put words in, you know in, 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 you know speak for bruce but but in my mind um it was very much uh, a very coherent sort of album and that has kind of now you know been translated to, to the live show and although um the the uh, the the show is not exactly a best of show. It's more like a samples from each of our eras, you know. Uh, interesting, interesting choices I think that Bruce made, uh, and 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 we haven't we haven't changed the set since the very first rehearsal. Uh, he just he just he just happened to hit on what he wanted to do very early in, in the rehearsal process. I mean, we only rehearsed you know four times or something, um, but but. Um, um so so uh, the songs um even though they're from uh, you know they're not all from uh, obviously not all from uh, the letter to you but but they but they take on a, a bit of that theme you know they, they start to you know they start to reflect so it's not it's not exactly a linear literal storyline you know from beginning to end but it has that it has that color uh, of 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 you know of the theme that comes from the album Especially, you know, now Backstreet's in particular now takes on, a, a, you know, an entirely different meaning. You know, now it's, you know, it's about George Thies, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's the wonderful thing about art, isn't it? You know, it just, you know, it, it's so, it's so, uh, it's flexible and, and, and uh, it, it can change uh, from time to time. Great art, I think, does that. You know, it, it has, you know... It has insights and and, and inf you know information about life, uh, emotional information that's being communicated that that can shift according to your own uh, situation, your own your own circumstance, you know. Uh, and that's a classic example of it right there. You know, in a show, he does last man standing in, in the middle of the show uh, into Backstreets and um, and does this rap at the end of Backstreets. It's uh, incredible. I mean, it's the most emotional thing, and um, and so you know, uh, you know, and that's not true, with, obviously, with every song, and, and that's not the that's not the intent. You know, we're still going to throw in some fun things and some things that aren't related to the theme. You know, but but overall, um, somebody on Twitter the other day added, you know, it's about mortality and vitality. You know, which I like. I like that. Um, you know, so you know, you know, the Twitterverse isn't all bad. You know, it just. <laughs> <laughs> you do, uh, I, do its learn, moments. I, I do occasionally learn things after i 
go on troll patrol, you know, and <laughs> mute all the fucking MAGA assholes, you know, which, you know, it's almost a full time job. Uh, I don't know what they're doing in my fucking feed to begin with. I mean, you know, what are they I'm doing? I'm in Kentucky. I'm used to that one. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not kidding. I don't um, know how those two fucking senators keep getting elected. I mean, talk about, you know, an election process that needs to be examined. I mean, how do those two assholes keep getting elected down there? Well, they don't have to... one single thing for the population. Yeah. Not one thing. Name one thing, okay, that Rand and McConnell have ever done for the fucking Kentucky population, the working class. They, nobody can name one single thing, okay? No. I mean, how do they keep getting elected? I don't get it. You know? Oh my God. Of course not. I'm telling you, I I I I blame the DNC for this. You know, let's not let's not we're not going to get into this, you know, because, you know, that, <laughs> right. that's another three hours of me, right. you know, of me, you know, bashing these motherfuckers. But, you know, I mean, I, I'm, I'm sorry. You know, people were so thrilled that we only lost the house by five seats. I'm like, what? what? You know, what do you what? What, the, what is the matter with you? You know, um, you know, uh, Mrs. Lincoln, you know, don't worry about it. It was only a small caliber pistol. <laughs> you know, you know right. sorry about that, right. you know. Uh, you know, I mean, what you know, we lo lo but to lose to these complete lunatics, you know, I mean, it's embarrassing. You know, it's embarrassing. They should have gone door to door in Kentucky, door to door, and just ask people what, what, why are you voting for this guy? <laughs> what, what is it about these guys that you like? <laughs> okay. Right. Well, I can honestly say it wasn't us in Louisville, uh, but uh, we're sort of the outlier in the state. So one of the no, no. couple outliers. But anyway, we uh, love Louisville. Louisville is a special place. Special place. You know, I'm an old gambler from way back. So you know, it's one of the sacred cities. You know. Yeah, I was thinking about. I saw you posted about the Derby, and I was thinking, like, you know, we 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 gave NRBQ to the world. They they came from here. Uh, we give the rugby's for the moment back in the '60s. You know, they came from here. My morning jacket slant and all that stuff later. You know, but uh, I figured like you probably got some ties somewhere in there. Just the amount of ties that you have. <laughs> yeah, Kentucky headhunters. Sure. Right. Um, yeah. Well, I got you know my one of my best friends, you know, backstretch Billy uh, lives there, and uh, you know, uh, he's my he's my uh, my track guy. So we we, we occasionally you know visit and. Um, you know, uh, uh, you know, I can go and visit my money uh, occasionally, but but uh, anyway, let's not get, go there either. All right. <laughs> no man, uh, it, the tour has been fantastic to watch, and of course, I've been watching from afar online and everything, and seeing what you guys are doing, and when then the only strong survive tracks make it in there, and 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 I'm just so happy that you guys are still doing it, you know, and and what you know still is possible for the future. I mean, as a greedy fan, you were talking about, you know, it's all about you and you're and and making it greedy. I'll say it's like in the fabled vault, I'm so curious, at, you know, what else is hiding because it seems like every album has a story of like, oh yeah, we started working on this so long ago and now it became this and it's like you think mm, you, you think yeah. there's more on the way like that? I don't know, you know, he's always got some something somewhere you know it's just it's just like endless and uh he's always got an album or two in his pocket you know uh so um don't yeah i'm never gonna be surprised what he pulls out um but those but those but those were nice surprises to me i i wasn't that familiar with those songs i mean you know the, the real fans of course were um uh, but um I didn't really remember uh, if I were a priest or, or Janie uh, needs a shooter, you know, um, and they were just terrific, you know, terrific songs to redo. And, um, you know, you're, not, you're never going to write that way again. You know what I mean? There's a certain innocence with those early, that early stuff that um, is just so refreshing and, and nice. And, uh, you know, just having fun with words, you know, I mean, uh, you know, nobody loves the English language more than Bob Dylan. Okay, I mean, this guy just loves the language. Okay, and we all we've all learned from him. Um, but you know, Bruce in those early days was was very very influenced by by the early Bob Dylan, and um, and so he fell in love with the language as well. Uh, you know, uh, so you you know you get these these storylines. You know, 
well, like like Bruce says, when we do a fire reprise, he's like, you know, I still don't know what it means, but but we we like it, you know. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, but that, in those days, you didn't have to know what it meant. You know what I mean? You just you were just having fun throwing words together and uh, you know creating images and you know let let people make up their own stories, man. You know, um, that's part of the process too. It's nice. It's nice to leave some room uh, when you can for the audience to participate. Uh, you know, art, art, art is is best at that, really. You know, art, 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 and religion. You know, they both work uh, because of a, of an element of mystery. You know, uh, you don't want to know everything about it. You know what I mean? You don't want to really know. Uh, you know, the, the, you know, too many details. Sometimes you want to be able to participate and make up your own, you know? So, uh, you know, those early songs have that sort of random, just coolness to it, you know? Yeah. Well, again, love how it, the tour has been going and the storyline. I really do enjoy this set, but let me tie it back around. I'm going to close out with this because again, 20, 21 years of Underground Garage, that ain't nothing, especially in radio. And I know that personally. Mm. Congratulations. Mm. I hope you do this for another 20, 30, 50, 60 years because it's important. Well, thank you. Uh, um, certainly, I hope the, the format, bo both this format and my other format, Outlaw Country, um, which basically does the same thing, you know, basically plays all the cool songs that nobody else is playing, you know, basically. Um, in Outlaw Country's case, it's all three generations of Hank Williams, which sums it up, you know. Uh, but but um, um, I, I think both formats uh, hopefully will live, you know, beyond me. You know, as I hope my, you know, my my school curriculum will, you know, uh, so so yeah, it 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 it, it is important, um, you know, more important than I am, and and uh, and and hopefully it will continue um, to connect the dots, you know, because uh, this era uh, will be like I say, it will, will be special until they invent new instruments, you know, um, and even then, I think they'll probably be, you know studying chuck berry you know copying chuck berry and little richard and, and um and so so you know the, the the um the idea is is to continue to to reinforce uh where things have come from there's still a resonance even though even though you know yeah rock is no longer part of the mainstream and it's no longer on the charts you know um but the sensibility uh, that comes from the rock era is still present with us, you know, um, a great rock band. And, and, and we, we introduce a new one almost every week. I mean, great bands. And, you know, they're going to have a following, you know, it's never going to be mainstream again, maybe, you know, maybe they're never going to have a hit per se, but hopefully people come out and support them when they come and play live and, they're going to still get something out of that experience that's that's important and essential and unique unique there's something unique about rock you know and uh and all the subgenres that come from it um so we know we 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 will continue to do that and and, and like i say beyond beyond me it'll, it'll continue and, and that's important all right well thank you Stephen. thank you so much for doing it and uh and thank you for taking the time to talk about it my pleasure man and thanks to my guest. Also, thanks to you for uh, for checking out the episode in the series. Before you get out of here, hit that subscribe button. Again, uh, you get three brand new interviews every single week. New one every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at uh, right here on YouTube or, of course, anywhere in podcast land, including iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podchaser, NPR, or WFPK.org as well. A great way to keep up with your favorite artists and discover new ones as well. Then after that, actually head over to WFPK.org. That's where I do a show, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern. It's an hour full of song premieres, music news, anniversary spins, bonus interviews, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern at WFPK.org. Consequence has your music and film news. You can also find me on the social media spots, uh, Facebook, Instagram, mostly on Twitter. All three of them, the address is at Kyle Meredith. Do hope you like and follow along. That does it for another edition. I'm Kyle Meredith. I'll see you next time.